Hello and welcome to a new episode of Adobe Creative Cloud TV. My name is Terry White and in this episode we're going to take a look at four hidden gems in Photoshop CC. Now Photoshop, as you know, has hundreds if not thousands of features. And usually we focus on, you know, the, every, every time there's a new version or a new update, you know, what the top features are. But there are a lot of little hidden things, even in Photoshop CC, that people often overlook or will never discover. That's why they're called hidden gems. So today I'm going to expose you to four of them. Let's take a look. The first one actually um, comes as a request from um, when we introduced uh, Photoshop Generator, the ability to generate multiple images from the same layer just by changing the layer name. The problem was layer names could only be so many characters. So you could only get so many images out of it because you just couldn't type a layer name long enough. Well, in this latest update of Photoshop CC, the layer name ability has been, I believe, stretched out to 256 characters. So you can have a nice long layer name now which will give you the ability to have more generated images. Let's take a look at how it works. So uh, the first thing I'm gonna do is go ahead and enable generator for this particular image. I'm just gonna go ahead and uh, generate and turn on image assets. All right, so now that I've done that, uh, we're gonna go ahead and just show you how the feature would work normally. If I were to go in and change this to the word compass and put .png on the end of the file name so that it knows to make a PNG file from that. As soon as I enter the file name and head out to the finder, um, it will generate a folder and it will generate a new image called Compass PNG. It just created that image for me. Now, if I go back and I put a comma in and I say that I want a, a another one, maybe a 512 by 512 uh, image, and I'm gonna call it 512 comp, dot png then what it will do is make my second image that's only 512 by 512 and it will just keep going so what this is great for is those of you using our digital publishing suite and you need to make all your different thumbnails for your app you can now do it from one layer in photoshop and just have it generate all the right sizes now i could keep going i could keep typing them all out but that would look kind of boring after a while so let me just jump over to a text file where I've got all the layer names spelled out. And the way I've done it is first I tell Photoshop what the size should be, so 1024 by 1024, and then I use 1024 as part of the name so I'll know which one it is. So 1024 comp dot PNG comma, 512 by 512, 512 comp dot PNG comma, so forth and so on. So let's go ahead and select this whole thing, copy it, head back over to Photoshop, uh, select my layer name and just go ahead and paste. Just in other words, change that entire layer name to that long string that I just created. And so here it is. If we hover over it, those are all the different name, all the different files I wanted to create for all my different icon sizes. Now, if we head out to the finder, it's already done it. It's already created one for each size. If I uh, uh, quick preview it here or quick view it, these are all the different sizes I needed for my app. So that's a um, one hidden gem right off the bat, just having the ability to have longer file names. Second hidden gem, we're gonna actually jump over to a different file here. Uh, let's go ahead and jump over to my Monument Valley file. And we're gonna do uh, two of the hidden gems, actually all three of the remaining ones on this file. So the first one is, did you ever want a tree in your photo? You know, you took a picture of this nice landscape and you wished you had that single lone tree there. Well, Photoshop will make one for you now. <laughs> so let's take a look. Edit, fill. Now, this is normally where you would fill something with a color. Or you'd fill it with content aware fill. And of course, we have pattern. Well, wait a minute. Pattern, we haven't used that in a long time. Let's take a look at pattern. Because now we have new scripted patterns. So if we enable scripted patterns, believe it or not, there's one called tree. And if we go to tree, uh, we can go ahead and click OK and it will bring up a tree generator. That's right, it will make a custom tree for you based on your specifications. All the way down to what kind of tree do you want? So for example, this is kind of a desert scene, so I might want something like a shrub. 
and um, well, you know, it's kind of dry, so I probably don't want that many leaves. So let's go ahead and dial the leaves down, make it look kind of dried out a little bit more. And maybe go down a little bit more. How about there? Almost, eh, I don't want it to be completely dead or barren. So how about four? All right, so we give it some leaves. Uh, and we can also to even change the light direction to match your image. So in other words, if light were coming in from a, a particular spot, uh, you can change the light direction here. So we can either type it in or just move it and it will move the light on the image to show you the light direction. So I moved it over to the other side, just for example. Now it takes a few you know, seconds to render this because it is actually rendering a new high res tree for you. So I'm gonna click okay. We're gonna get a progress bar and let it render. And um, I'll probably just cut right to the finish. Now, there's our tree, but I made one fatal mistake. It put it on whatever layer I was on. And so now I can't do anything with it. I can't move it. So let's quickly undo that and let's make a new layer first and then just go ahead and render that out again. So we're gonna go up to edit, fill, and we'll just go ahead and choose our tree one more time. And it should remember all the settings and we'll click okay and let it go. All right, so now we have our tree, but more, more importantly, we have it on its own layer so we can do whatever we want with it. So first of all, uh, just good layer hygiene here. Let's go ahead and uh, rename our layer tree. And now I can use free transform, command T in my case, or control T on Windows. Let's go ahead and scale it down. Let's go ahead and move it up to the spot where I want it. And we scale it down a little smaller. And there is my tree that didn't exist before. All right, so that was hidden gem number two. Hidden gem number three. Let's go ahead and, and not forget this time and make another new layer. And we're gonna go ahead and make this layer, we're gonna call it border. Now that we've got our border layer, that's exactly what I wanna create is a border. So let's go ahead and um, go up to our edit menu and fill, and you're not gonna believe this, but believe it or not, under scripted patterns, there's also picture frame. And if we do picture frame and click okay, there are, dozens of different types of fancy frames for you to choose from. And of course, you don't always have to pick a fancy frame if you want something that's a little bit more standard uh, or a little bit more, um, I'll say professional. <laughs> you can just do a uh, more professional looking frames such as this one. Now, you can all, again, set your margins, set your color, set whatever you want, and it will build your frame right on, your, right on whatever layer you want, in this case, the border layer. Click OK. Done. Now that frame did exactly what it was supposed to do. I could have made it a little thicker, made it stand out more, but it did what it, it did what it was supposed to. What I'd like to do now is make that look more like a mat. So what I'm gonna do is go ahead and grab my marquee tool, and I'm just gonna go right to the edge of the frame and go ahead and select it all the way out to the other edge. And then we'll go ahead and uh, inverse that selection. So go up to our select menu, come down to inverse. So now it's selecting the opposite of the frame. And I'm gonna go ahead and create one more new layer and we'll call that new layer matte because that's what we're gonna create. We're gonna create a matte. So let's go back to our default colors here of um, black and white. We'll just hit the letter D and I'm gonna hold down my option key or alt key in your case and hit delete and uh, that will fill it with black. I'm gonna undo that and hit the letter X so that white's on top and then we'll again option delete on Mac or alt backspace on PC. That will go ahead and give me my white fill. And the reason I put it on its own layer is now if I deselect, I can go ahead and lower the opacity of that and kind of create like a ghosted mat. Now, had I put it on the same layer as the border, if I drop the opacity, the border would also change in opacity as well. So I wanted to keep those separate. So that was hidden gem number three, just being able to create uh, picture frames. Now, this last one is one that is a long time coming, and it is you, when you have a background and you want to convert it into a layer. There are all kinds of ways to do it. Double click on the background, name the layer. Uh, drag the little lock icon to the trash, which was another hidden gem. That would be a way to uh, change it into a layer. Now, all you have to do is literally just click the lock. That's it. It's now a layer. Yay. Okay, so... No more jumping through hoops to change your background into a layer. Just click the little lock icon to effectively unlock it. And now it's a layer. That's it. 
So those are four quick hidden gems in Photoshop CC for you to play around with. And I think you'll get some cool effects out of the generator one. Um, uh, and just, I think you'll have fun with that. So that's it for this episode of the uh, Adobe Creative Cloud TV. My name is Terry White, and we'll catch you on the next one.